Hello, and welcome to this special throwback edition of Maddie's Rap with author Matt D. Talford. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Now, why is this a throwback edition? Well, for those of you who have been following me for the last four or five years, you know that back in 2019, I started Maddie's Rap as the show where we rap about things that guys rap about when we're hanging out. What do guys rap about when we're hanging out? Sports, women, cars, technology, business, you know, money, career, family, religion to a degree, politics to a degree. These are some electronics and gadgets. These are some of the things that guys talk about when we're hanging out. In 2020, I moved away from that because my numbers at the end of 2019, when I reviewed them, suggested that my wheelhouse was talking about scripture. So I migrated my, my show over to breaking down scripture in 2019. I'm sorry, 2020. 2022, we switched it up again. We said, hey, it is the most high spoke to me and said it's time to show the people that the Bible is a spiritual book, that the scriptures are spiritual in nature, not religion. So that is where I migrated to. I got away from the sports. So we're having a throwback edition tonight because every now and then I will still, I will, you know, talk about sports or do a movie review. And the occasion is such that I have to break down the epic mega fight that took place on Saturday, July the 29th. Today's date, by the way, is Sunday, July 30th. So this fight just happened less than 24 hours ago. It's 7:19 uh, p.m. Eastern. So this fight just happened less than 24 hours ago. I have to break this down and I have to show you and tell you what the boxing analysts and commentators did not tell you about Terrence Bud Crawford, who won the fight, by the way, if, if you're sleeping or you're not into boxing and uh, or if you slept through it or whatever, and uh, Errol Spence Jr. Now, um, so I'm going to get to that. But let me just say this, because I got a lot of homies that that guys I used to work with in corporate America. And these guys, for some reason, they they always test me when it comes to my boxing knowledge. And they always they, for some reason, they just see me as the guy who's going to pick the other guy that they're not all pulling for. And I'm like, listen, guys, y'all are picking these fighters with your heart. I'm picking them based on what I'm looking at. OK. And what I have seen for years, even in the lead up to this fight, the hype. Years ago, they, they people listen. They have been hyping this fight up for years. Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence Jr. And the popular opinion was that Terrence Bud Crawford had had faced no opponent like Errol Spence Jr. Well, I spoke the opposite. I said Errol Spence Jr. has not seen a machine like Terrence Crawford. Okay. And so they were like, Matt, you know, you're always picking the other guy. Uh, they, we, we were hyping up the, the fight that never happened between um, AJ, that is Anthony Joshua, and Deontay Wilder. I told them, explained to them why I felt Deontay Wilder is the pick in that fight. That fight hasn't happened as of this date. I don't know if that fight ever will happen. I mean, I feel like uh, uh, Deontay Wilder's career basically went in a different direction after the Tyson Fury trilogy. And uh, people feel like he got exposed or whatever. I was like, nah, he really didn't get exposed. I mean, his game is what it is. You know, his game has been what it is, what it was. I mean, he's all offense, no defense. We know that. Um, he just ran up on a guy who is a master at slipping punches and is heavy handed enough to keep his opponent honest. And that is uh, that's Tyson Fury. Now, uh, this isn't about heavyweights. I'm going to come I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back to the welters and what happened last night. But um, as far as Tyson goes, is Tyson indestructible? No. He's not. I'm not going to compare him to Tyson Fury to me does not compare to Terrence Bud Crawford. I personally feel like Terrence Bud Crawford is the best pound for pound fighter in any weight division right now. And in my opinion, the best pound for pound fighter in any weight division of the last 20 years. Yeah, I said that of the last 20 years, at least. OK, um, he's 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 amazing. He's next level. And that's no slight to listen. I love Floyd Mayweather Jr. I love watching him fight. I love his style. I love I love his his business acumen. I love the way he manages himself in and out of the ring as far as his career goes. I, I think Terrence is just a, a notch above that, y'all. And skill skill wise, I just I think he is. Let me tell you something, all right? I'm gonna tell you what. I watched that fight last night with my wife, all right? I didn't want I didn't feel like leaving the house watching it. My boys, my brother called me up. He's like, hey, why don't you come watch the fight with me and dad? I didn't feel like leaving the house. I was just like, you know, I'm gonna watch this one at home, whatever. And 
I'm going to tell y'all what I told her. This is number one. This is point number one that the uh, commentators and the analysts did not tell you. Terrence Crawford is highly angelically protected. Okay? He, that man is protected by some very powerful angels. Why do you say that, Matt? Have you heard him tell the story of how he came within an inch of his life after being um, a, a a victim of a uh, of a of an assault with a deadly weapon. Let me just say that because I don't like to glorify violence to talk about it. Let me just say that he was assaulted with a with a deadly weapon, a firearm. Okay, that was his story. And I said to her, I said the same angel that was with him on that night has been with him since birth. These are some things that we see spiritually. You can you can see when somebody's when somebody's divinely protected. When you are divinely protected, there's no harm that's going to come upon you. I don't care if it's in real life. I don't care if it's in sport. So you need to understand what you're going against if you get in the ring with Terrence Crawford. That man is that man is divinely protected. It's first and foremost, okay? Number two, when you go through what he went through, what opponent is going to make you afraid when you stare death in the face? What opponent in the ring is going to make you afraid? When you've looked death in the face and you're here to tell about it, the way he did, and and that and that is of that is of no credit of his own. This is what I need y'all to understand. That is of no credit of his. That man, for some reason, I don't know. That soul. Let me let me go deeper than that. That soul. That soul is protected and guarded. Perhaps that is a reward for some righteous deeds that he did in another lifetime. Y'all know I talk about spirituality over here at Maddie's Rap. That's what we do now. So I'm able to give you give you sports in that lens too. Okay. That man is divinely protected. So when you when you get in there with him, you're going against someone with a high level of confidence, a high level of skill, and no fear. And on top of that, divine protection. Now let me give you some analytics, and maybe some of the commentators have said this, maybe some of them saw it, but I'm gonna get back to something else that you didn't that they didn't uh, tell you, okay? The reason why I had never picked, and this is all much much due respect to Errol Spence Jr., but I've watched several of his fights, and I watched a slew of Bud Crawford, and I'm going to tell you stylistically, Errol lost that fight before the ink dried on the contract. See, Errol is what I like to call a north-south fighter. He's north-south. He goes in one direction. He's north-south. He go he goes forward. He pulls back. He goes forward. He pulls back. He's 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 a north-south fighter. Terence is omnidirectional. He is omnidirectional. Terence can attack you from any angle. He he has pinpoint accuracy. His boxing eye, his eye and his ability to not just slip punches, but to perfectly time and pick off your punch with one of his. His speed is impeccable. Impeccable speed. His speed's up there with Floyd. He I don't know which one of them is faster. I'll be honest with you. I don't know which one is faster. And and Floyd has been in there with some fast guys, too. I remember the Floyd fight with Zab Judah and how Floyd weathered the storm for the first three, four rounds. And then it was like, all right, I got him now. Let me do another another masterful fighter. I don't want to talk about Floyd because I'm not here to, to to create any type of ooh, who would win. I'm not here for that. We're talking about the guys who are active. This is this is this is uh, this is this is uh, Errol's time. He's been denied for a long time. People did not want to like him, but he kept coming. He kept coming. Listen to his listen to his post fight interview. Listen to his post fight interview. He kept coming. And and listen, I'm a fan of the underdog. I always have been. I'm a fan of the guy who's got the skills and he's humble. Let's talk about the humility. And in, in, in the lead up before they even signed a contract with all of this jibber jabber back and forth, who Terrence had a humble respect. I mean, he, he spoke with confidence, but at the same time, humility with regard to how he saw this fight going. Versus how Errol talked about it. Terrence was a lot more humble. He was a lot more humble. I love that. I love humility. I love humility. With great power comes great responsibility. And he handles his responsibility well. He has a lot of responsibility and he shows it. He shows it. So when you got a unidirectional fighter or a, a north-south fighter going against an omnidirectional fighter who has power and speed... I'm always going to give the nod to the omnidirectional fighter. So that, so to me, that in and of itself was 
that by itself, not even talking about the intangibles, his, his divine protection, not even talking about the intangibles. I'm talking about just that alone. Just that alone. And that's no, listen, Errol is, he's protected too because he survived a car accident that most people would not walk away from. And he's here to tell about it. So he's divinely protected too, but there's something special about Terrence Crawford. And I, I personally think, he, he, like I said, I think he came here with an angel. And not only is that angel with him everywhere he goes outside that ring, that angel's with him when he's inside that ring. Let me say that. And it, it gives me chills to even say that. But some things you see with a spiritual eye. OK, now, um, what else did the commentators not tell you? What did the what did the analysts and the commentators not tell you? What the analysts and commentators did not tell you is that Terrence actually took it easy a little bit. I'm not saying that he didn't. I'm, and it's no disrespect to Errol, but Terrence really could have hurt him. And he chose not to. He chose not to. I love the way that they handled themselves in the way in. I love that. There was a mutual respect between two gladiators. Mutual respect. There was none of this shoving it, man. Ah, nah, nah, nah. Mutual respect, man. They shook hands. I love that. I hope that is the model moving forward. I hope other fighters see that and 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 understand the the amount of respect for their opponent, such that these men are lethal warriors. There are people that don't. There are people that go go to the arena, fight, and don't go home. There are a number of people who don't don't make it home from the arena because of the, the, the damage that they sustained in the ring. They leave the arena, go to the hospital, and they're gone. That has happened. So that's a real that's a real thing when people get in that ring. And I love it when fighters respect each other enough to say, hey, you know what, man? This is this is a sport. This is how we get paid. It's a job. I don't wish no harm. I don't wish no ill ill will on that man. That man's got a family. I got a family. I pray, I pray God's protection over my life. I pray God's protection over that man's life, too. Let's get in and have a good fight, a good, clean fight, and um, let's get paid and then go home and understand that we just went there and did our job. We entertained the, 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 the people. We gave it our best. We left it in the ring. I love that. I love that. So that's the other thing that they did not tell you. If you watch that fight with a critical eye and you know how how Terrence watched some of his old fights and, and, and look at how he looks like he's pissed off at his opponent and he's putting them things on him. Like, let me let me teach you a lesson. Terrence executed judgment. He executed judgment and and um, discretion in fighting a man that he had a lot of respect for last night. OK, he could have seriously hurt him and he did not. He cho he chose to. Y'all watch that fight, man. Terrence is that dude. He really is. He really is. Um, uh, Errol could have taken a lot, a lot worse punishment than he did. Terrence, Terrence held back just enough, and I'm not saying that he was pulling punches. I, I dare not say that. Terrence did what he needed to do to win, but without severely hurting his opponent. He could have severely hurt him. That is what the the analysts and the commentators did not tell you. Okay. Now, last but not least. What did I see? What did I feel watching those two fighters fight? I saw two guys that really did not dislike each other. And they, two guys that kind of, as the fight went on, neither of them really wanted to be in there. That's what I saw. That is what the commentators and the analysts did not tell you, okay? And if I'm wrong, I mean, you know, hopefully... You know, maybe Terrence or or, or Errol will. I, and I'm I'm listen. Nobody nobody knows me in that that arena because I don't do I don't have a boxing podcast. I'm I'm a, just consider me consider me a fan and an analyst, okay? But um, as that fight raged waged on, I saw two guys that really didn't want to be in there. You know, Terrence Terrence. I think I feel like Terrence felt like, how can I end this fight without hurting this guy because I love this brother? How can I end this fight without hurting him because he's not he's not on my level he's not on my level and I like him I don't want to hurt him and for Errol like I said Errol knew I believe in my heart of hearts that he knew after round three that he just had he did not have a game plan and it was clear from his corner as well now are there some adjustments he could have made to probably um last to the 12th round I saw one or two things I'm not gonna I'm not gonna divulge those right here because I'm just not. I'm not. I'm just not. I saw one or two things that he probably could have done to let go the distance. But 
he would have needed to start doing those early on in the fight so as not to sustain the amount of damage that he did. What I saw last night from the difference between Spence and Crawford, Crawford, complete game. Defense, offense, and counter punch ability. What I saw with Spence was offense. All offense. And this is what I've, I've been telling guys for a long time. And people say, let me say this, and I'm going to get ready to wrap this up. A lot of people say, Matt, you know, going leading up to the fight, they're like, Matt, you know, I don't think that uh, that um, Crawford's going to be able to handle Spence's power. Crawford takes too many shots. And what I need y'all to understand about Terrence Crawford is Crawford eats shots when he wants to. And when Terrence is taking a shot, whatever y'all are watching via them cameras, watching it at home, I'm telling you what I know, okay? And I don't know Terrence personally, but I know fighting, okay? And I know strategy, okay? Terrence takes shots to prove to his opponent that they cannot hurt him. Now, obviously, if there's a if Terrence had to get in there, let's just throw something wild out there. Let's say Terrence had to get in the ring with Mike Tyson. Do you think Terrence is going to take a shot from Mike Tyson to prove to him he could take? No, because he already has gauged in his mind. I know how much pressure I can take. I'm not going to do something stupid. Terrence didn't take a lot of shots last night from Spence. And Spence is known for having a high connect rate. Terrence didn't take a lot of shots, which tells me he respected Spence's ability to be able to hurt him if he did connect at the right time in the right spot. Some of these other fights that you've seen Terrence fighting against guys that look like killers, Terrence was in there to discourage them. Because let me tell you something about the ring. One of the most frustrating things and one of the one of the quickest ways to humble a fighter without touching him, when I say without touching him, without hitting him, one of the quickest ways to humble a fighter is to show him that he cannot hurt you. One of the quickest ways to humble a fighter and control a fight is to prove and put cast the seed of doubt in your opponent's mind you take you, you do that a couple ways number one your defense is so good that they cannot hit you either you're checking all of their punches you're checking their punches checking them they can't hit you you're blocking or you're slipping them and making them miss bad like floyd mayweather like terence crawford too you either take their punch and prove to them that your punches don't hurt me you cannot phase me or two you check their punches or slip them and that guy will get frustrated really quick. He will then begin to, to doubt himself and like, why am I in here? I can't hit this guy. If I cannot hit him, how am I going to win this fight? So Terrence Crawford takes shots to cast the seed of doubt into you and show you that you cannot hurt him. Now, there were a couple of shots that, 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 that uh, Spence threw last night that would have rocked a lot of other fighters. Terrence ate those pretty good. Which proves, okay, he's got a chin too. So now, you you got lucky and caught me, but even when you got lucky and caught me, you couldn't wobble me. So now what? Okay, I, I know what mistake I made to get hit. I'm not going to get hit with that again. This is why you only saw him really get touched maybe twice in that whole, in those nine rounds. I saw um, Crawford get touched maybe three times. I, two, two definitely st stood out in my mind. Maybe three times he got touched in nine rounds. And when I say touched, I'm talking about touched with something significant. When you are a champion and you're fighting someone else and you're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at them and, and you can't, one, you can't connect or two, you can't phase them. Now you start doubting yourself. And then when you go back to your ring, to your corner, if your corner's got no, if they got no sound advice for you, not only have you lost, but that corner's lost too. And there's no disrespect to the corner. Sometimes you can't plan for you can't plan for everything. Mike Tyson said it best. He said everybody's got to plan till they get punched in the mouth. I, I, I really, if you want to know, if you want to know the truth from my heart, I feel like there were times in there last night where Terrence Crawford felt sorry for his opponent, and that that is um that is what the what the uh, analysts and the commentators didn't tell you. Terrence ha has a lot not had. Has a lot of respect for for uh, Spence Jr. and um, he could have he could have dealt worse damage to him and he didn't. I saw compassion in there last night. That's what the uh, commentators aren't telling you. That's what the boxing analysts aren't telling you. I saw compassion in that ring last night. That in and of itself was beautiful. That was beautiful because again, here's a man that liked the guy he was fighting, but they had to make the fight happen. They had to make the fight happen. This is why the Klitschko brothers had it. They, they Listen, 
they they had an understanding in the boxing community back when Vladimir and Vitali were fighting. They said, we'll never fight each other. We'll never fight each other. There's some guys that you should not fight. Now, um, as I get ready to wrap this up, I know that they have an automatic rematch clause. And I heard Spence after the, um, the you know, the post-fight press conference, he mentioned rematching at 154. I don't, I don't see any reason for him to do that. I mean, fighters take that. Let me tell you something. Every great fighter of the last 15, 20 years has had that fight that changed their career. And they were never the same fighter again after that. For Roy Jones, it was Antonio Tarver. For Evander Holyfield, it was Riddick Bow. For um, who else? Who, who else had the career turned around by uh, 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 Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury? Um, I, listen, every great fighter has had, ran up on that guy where after they fought him, they just... Well, I can't speak for Deontay because I haven't really seen him. Uh, you know, I haven't seen him back in there significantly since since the Tyson Fury trilogy. So I can't really speak for Deontay. But um, as far as er, um, Errol Spence Jr. goes, I think this is a fight that, that um, this may be his fight. And to, as far as I'm concerned, there's no, there's no shame in hanging the gloves up. I mean, I'm a, I'm a tennis player. Y'all hear me talk about that. Those of you who are my returning subscribers, you know I talk about tennis from time to time. I, I play tennis. Um, tennis is, is it's not like tennis. You know, you, you got that one guy that seems like you just can't beat him, but you might catch him on a day where he's having a, an off day and get him. You know, like Roger, with, uh, Roger Federer with, with Nadal, Rafael Nadal on clay. Roger just wasn't going to get Nadal on clay. Nadal wasn't going to get Roger on grass, but he caught him that one day at Wimbledon, and he just wasn't going to lose. You can do things like that in tennis, but boxing, when you if you get caught with a shot, flash flash knockout, yeah, you can go back and look at the tape and say, ah, oh, man, I see what I did. That's different. But when you go for nine, eight, eight and a half rounds with a guy and, and nothing different, I, I don't care what weight division you move to. It's going to be pretty much the same. So, um... I think that, you know, uh, will, will Errol Spence Jr. recover physically from this? Absolutely he will. Psychologically, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just, that, that, that's in your head for a while. And I think that if, I think if, if, if I'm in, if I'm on Team Spence, my advice is go back to 154, go take another fight, go take one of them other belts from somebody at, at 154 because you're still a great fighter. And then, and then, and then, then hang it up after that because, um, uh, I don't think a rematch against, uh, especially an immediate rematch. I don't think an immediate rematch for at, against um, Crawford does anything for you. I don't. I don't see anything. I didn't see anything in there that suggested that a rematch is going to give us a different result. Um, again, to contrast with Deontay Wilder and and Tyson Fury, after that first fight, I saw some things that that suggested that a rematch was was uh, you know was due, was necessary, was plausible, you know. This one, no, no, don't don't do that to yourself. Uh, I, I think that um, you know it's difficult to uh, to erase losses like that from your mind, but um, I think that therapeutically speaking, if I had to suggest or advise, if I was on Spence, in Spence's camp, I would say Spence, go and fight somebody else at 154, beat them to regain your confidence, and then maybe if you want to fight Bud one more time and hang it up after that. I, don't, I just don't I don't like seeing guys take that amount of, of, of punishment and they continue fighting. I think you should I think if I if I were a pro fighter and I and I, I pro fighters might watch this and say, yeah, everybody says that, whatever. But I mean, just me knowing me and and, and just loving what I do out out it, what I would be doing outside of the ring if I were if I were a boxer and you know wasn't fighting or whatever. I would say that, you know, my mind is too important to me. I, I just my mind and my faculties that are attached to my head are too important to me. I don't I don't I don't want to risk that um, t in taking, you know, more, more shots, more punishment, whatever. I would just say, you know what, Matt, look at this like you would be advising your own son, your child, whatever, and say, you had a great career. Um, it's time to hang it up. Maybe it's, it's time to hang it up, you know, and just um, I really felt bad because I like both of those guys. I like them both. I just feel like Terrence is uh, Terrence is next level. He's next level. And um, to be honest with you, if Terrence retired, if he hung his gloves up here at this point and walked away from it, who else out there is there to fight that? I mean, Terrence is Terrence is going to beat anybody in his weight class right now. So um, 
it, you know, do you, how much money do you, how much more money do you need? How much more do you want? You know, you can continue, but I, I, I think at this point, Terrence, I think that's a that was a defining moment in his career. I'd like to see Terrence retire and go do something, and maybe go 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 into common, go into the commentary booth and make your money there. You know, you're to me, Terrence is at this point, and I've seen a lot. Of, like I named some of the fighters. Listen, I've I've I've, I've seen the fighters in the seventies. My fa- my favorite boxer growing up for a long time was was uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard, Ray Leonard and Ali. Those were my two favorites. Um, I have to say, in watching Terrence Bud Crawford's career. I think he's the greatest. Um, you know, um, there are certain guys that are just next level. I mean, they, they literally are the Bruce Lees of, of boxing. And um, I, this this Terrence Crawford's in rare air. You got Terrence Crawford. You got you got uh, um, Floyd Money Mayweather. You got I think uh, I think Bernard Hopkins. You know, a lot of people didn't like his style, but I, I watched what he was doing. Bernard B Hop was a chess master in the ring. He was a chess master. So. Um, <sighs> Kudos to if I listen, if I if there's any positive takeaway for Errol Spence Jr. from last night, Errol's got one of the biggest hearts I've ever seen in the ring. And his stamina, listen, there are two things that you need to, to there are two things that you need to prepare yourself for heading into a professional 12 round boxing ma- match. OK, one, you got to have late fight stamina. You need to be able to go 12 rounds of activity, 12 rounds. of I'm talking about throwing them. Moving, constant movement, not taking any breaks. You see some fights where guys, both fighters are a little bit tired. They both take rounds off and just kind of paw at each other, just trying to, you know, trying to take a round off to, you know, conserve energy throughout the entire fight. Neither of those two fighters last night are that type of fighter. Terrence Crawford is going to look fresh in the 12th round. Errol Spence Jr. is going to look fresh in the 12th round. Errol Spence Jr. still had legs and stamina even in the ninth round. But I think the referee did the right thing. And um, I personally, I, if I were his corner, I would not have allowed him to take, you know, maybe after round six, I would have said, look, you got to show me, you know. And I know he went down twice in round seven. So, you know, but me after round six, I would have been like, you got one more round to maybe after round five, maybe round six, I would have said, you need to go out here and knock him out. Try to knock him out this round. Try to knock him out. That's your only path to victory. Throw everything you got at him. See if you can hurt him. Maybe you can catch him with a body shot to the liver. Maybe you can catch him with a shot to the solar plexus. Maybe you can set up something and catch him upstairs. But you need to take the last bit of gas that you got in the tank and just floor it. Don't try to cruise to the don't try to cruise to the gas station. Don't try to coast to the gas station. Floor it. All gas, no brakes, and try to get this guy out of here. And and um if, if you don't and you take some more punishment, come back to this corner, I'm stopping it. That would have been me. Because to me personally, he didn't have to take any more punishment. Um, now, again, I watched the fight a second time. I, d- I really didn't want to watch it a second time because, again, just 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 the energy of what was going on in the ring. You had two guys that, as the fight went on, neither one of them wanted to be in there, really. I mean, Terrence didn't want to be giving any more. He knew that, he knew that Errol couldn't give him a fight. And he did. He just at that point he was like, "How can I win this fight without hurting my friend?" And that is what the that is what the analysts and the, and the boxing commentators commentators did not tell you. And Errol, on the other hand, he was like, "How can I, how can I leave this ring with dignity? I'm probably not going to win this fight, but I'm not going to stop trying. How can I leave with dignity?" And man, that was poetic. It was beautiful. It w- it was written like an epic saga. And I, y'all know I'm a writer, so literally from a literary standpoint. That was that was epic. I'm talking that was that was the Trojan Wars. That was that that was epic. That was the Battle of Thermopylae. That was that was epic in there, y'all. That was epic. Um I don't want to see those two fight again. I don't. There's no there, to me there's no reason for a rematch. Um I would like to Errol is good enough to get out there and get another win at one fifty four. Can he take a title at one fifty four? I, I I think he can. But um, there's there's just he's he's a uh, he's a north south fighter and he's not going to beat an omnidirectional fighter of the caliber of Terrence Bud Crawford. That's all I got, family. Um, I wish both of them well. Um, I wish my prayer is for a speedy recovery for Errol Spence Jr. physically. And my prayer is that he's able to put this fight behind him and um, perhaps, you know, just uh, find out if there's something else that, that, that maybe God has in store for him for his life. I mean, you don't walk away from a car accident like he did for no reason. 
So um, I think that there's maybe something else, you know, that he came to this earth to do. Because God, again, God don't spare you that type of thing. And the same same token I talked about earlier with Bud Crawford. God preserves us for reasons. He puts that angel of protection with us for a reason. Both of those men are highly protected from an angelic standpoint. But um, Terrence Crawford knows no fear. He knows no fear. And for him to come through what he did, there's no fighter that's going to ever make him afraid. And he's divinely protected on top of that. So I hope that... Uh, I hope they both hang the gloves up. Really, I don't. I don't. I don't. I think that would. I think that should be just a uh, um, a crowning moment in both of their careers, and um, both of them still have their faculties about them. Errol, he, his speech was a little bit slurred after the fight last night. Um, you know, some of that was just the shots he took. I think, you know, and then the other other the other part I think was just, you know, him not trying to break down. He just he didn't he didn't see that coming. He didn't see that coming. But nobody ever does when they get in there against uh, against that caliber fighter. Same thing with Floyd. Guys are getting there. Floyd, they thinking, okay, we're watching film. We know what we can do. Let's get the best sparring partners we can get um, for the, the for the lead up, you know, the training and the lead up to the fight. And then they get in there and they realize that, you know what, there's no sparring partner on the planet that can prepare me for this. It's the same with Terrence Bud Crawford. He right now is a pound for pound, the, the greatest fighter ever. I never saw uh, the great uh, um, Sugar Ray Robinson fight. Uh, you know, those guys are before my time. But as far as the time that I've been on this planet, I have not seen a fighter of the caliber of Terrence Crawford, and um, he's my favorite fighter right now. Uh, he's just and he's just it's beautiful to watch. His footwork is amazing. I, I, I look at guys' feet when they're boxing. His footwork and the way he gets into position to throw punches and the way he avoids punches is just the total body movement. It's just it's beautiful to watch. It's artistic. It's it's if I had to give it an abstract, this man has the moves of a ballroom dancer. He's got the moves of a ballroom dancer, y'all. He just, his footwork, wow. Um, imagine fighting a ballroom dancer that had hands. That's probably what you're looking at right there. This man's, a, he's, he's brilliant and he's blessed. And both of them are blessed and I'm glad that Errol walked away from that. And um, God bless both of these guys. And uh, boxing's a brutal sport. I don't watch nearly as much of it as I, I, used, as I used to. But I wanted to come on here and tell you guys what the analysts and the commentators did not tell you okay and i don't think they saw it but uh kudos hats off to uh terrence if nobody else saw it i saw what you did in there last night man and, and god bless you man god bless you 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 could have you could have, if you wanted to you could have hurt you really could have hurt him and you chose not to you chose not to and man god bless you for that this is why you're blessed y'all are seeing why this man is blessed right there y'all are seeing why he's blessed if you didn't see it go back and watch that fight and understand who Terrence Bud Crawford is and the uh, utmost confidence he has in his skill level. Understand that. <sighs> That's all I got for y'all family. Um, I know that this is a, a throwback edition of Maddie's Rap. Um, so I'm going to end this. Even though it's a throwback edition, I'm going to end it the way I end my normal videos now. And that is, life is short, y'all. I, I shouldn't say short. Life is fast. Time, the time goes by like that. It's a blip, okay? You're born, and God knows, I mean, even if you live to be, if you were on the planet for eight or nine decades, you, you talk to anybody, any senior citizen, and they, they'll tell you the same thing. I got, they'll say, I got here fast. What happened to the time? So with that being said, family, life goes by fast. Tell somebody you love them and mean it. How do you mean it? You have to show it. Love is a verb. It is a noun as well state of being right everybody wants to be in love everybody wants to feel love everybody wants to experience experience love that is the noun version of love but if you focus on the verb showing love giving love understanding that love is an action then the noun always takes care of itself show love give love and love will exist all right stay in them high vibrations family stay in that high vibrations stay the base, the root of high vibrational energy is courage. Everything goes up from there, all right? Stay out of them low vibrational frequencies. Fear, apathy, shame, grief. You gotta climb out of it with courage. You gotta have the courage to come out of those lower vibrational frequencies and climb up the chart till you hit love, peace, joy, and enlightenment. Love is a verb. It is a noun as well, but when we focus on the verb, the noun always takes care of itself. Uh, but, and, and again, I, I didn't say this. I'll say it now. 
y'all check out check out my other videos. This isn't what I normally do. This is a throwback edition of Maddie's Rap. But um, if you like being inspired, you like being motivated, you like being entertained, you like being educated, you like being uplifted, hit that subscribe button. If you're new, check out some of my other videos. I, I'm, I don't do boxing videos. I don't do sports videos. Every now and then, I feel the need to to talk to talk about one to share something. And this was important that the viewing public understood or understands that or what the analysts and the commentators did not tell you. Bud is a special person. He's special, y'all. Like him or not, he's special. He's gifted, and he's blessed and protected. God bless him, man. God bless him. He's one of my favorite personalities, let alone fighters. He's one of my favorite personalities. Peace, family.